Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This happens to be uh, one of my sons, my oldest son's job, uh, Timothy. And what he's going to do here, he's going to put some pavers in this entire area. He's going to use um, Orcata is the color. It's from Orco. And he's using the Villa style, 4x8s only, on a herringbone pattern. He's going to run a soldier course on both sides. So it's kind of like a band around the entire perimeter with a, a herringbone field. It's going to all be set on crushed concrete base. It's going to have about an inch sand and then it's going to get set on that. And then we're going to use the uh, polymeric fill for inside the joints of uh, all the pavers. First thing is establishing grade and what we're looking at here is where some existing drains. We have some sewer cleanouts as well. We've got two sewer cleanouts. They're going to get the brass um, flush easy access coupling on there and then we're going to add one drain to the existing drain system so right here on the side of the house it's going to flow to the drain the drains will be in the middle of the yard that'll be a low point there so half of this side yard will flow one direction the other half will flow the other direction so we're going to create a high point right in the middle of this house and it will flow two directions from there, finding a drain at either end. That's the basic layout of this whole procedure. This AC is just going to get worked around. A lot of times I like to move them and just run everything right underneath. And then bring the ACs back in. But by not moving them, you're saving about $500. Because that's the kind of the typical charge. To have it moved and then put back in. So here we are with the 70 pound Makita jackhammer, real good demo tool. Breaking it out relatively easy, even though it is thick concrete, it's about five inches and it's a big rock, three quarter inch aggregate from the looks of it. And there's no reinforcement. If there was reinforcement, um, it would probably take about three times as long to remove it with this tool like wire mesh or rebar, something like that, but nothing in it, fortunately. So we're able to bust it right on out. So we have the weep screed of the house, so we know we have to be below that with the top of pavers. So technically we could come up a little bit on the existing elevation of, we could come up a little bit higher than that slab was, still be below the weep screed. And that'll allow us enough space to get um, a good base in there like four inches of base, one inch of sand, and then uh, the pavers are two and a quarter. So basically we need to go down about eight inches from whatever top elevation is going to be. Once we establish the top of elevation of the pavers, go down eight inches and that'll allow for everything that we want to do underground. All right, now that we've got the coffee all out, we're gonna start digging this drain. So they consider it. And then also, we're going all the way to the AC unit back there. Cause we're gonna center that drain as well. Here's the existing drains that we're gonna retrofit and relocate. That way everything's kind of centered in the yard. So that was the old drain. We just moved it over. Got a more center now in this little area. And what else we're gonna be doing right now is we're gonna be crowning the middle of this area where that stake is right there. It's gonna be sloping this way to that drain. And also it's gonna be sloping this way. And we're gonna be setting up another drain right over there, pretty much where that stake is. And that's gonna capture all the water for this area, this area. And we're also gonna be sloping it over there where that stake is. That's another crown high point where it's gonna be coming back to this drain. And the rest of the water is gonna be flowing out to the front of the gate. Once we established the elevation, we ran into a problem with the uh, property line block wall footing. And this happens uh, really too often where footings are too high. A lot of times why that happens is because the people that are doing the block, they're just lazy typically. And they don't want to dig that extra, you know, four or five inches to set the block down below grade. Also, you have to buy another block as well. So you got a whole nother course or a split going in. So it's more money. 
it's more labor you know so that's why you always run into these situations because I'm always chipping footings I always personally spend the extra money and add another course underground because it's not fun chipping footings out to allow to for space for planting for a lot of different things all right what we're gonna do right now is between lines on this crown so that we know the high points and make sure we're getting a nice slope from the crown to the drains and so we can snap the chalk line against the wall right here right here and snap against the house as well carry these lines all the way around no way to get any kind of equipment back here like a mini skid it's just too tight of access to get in and out so it's all hand work that stake that you see there in the middle has an elevation marked on it and that's actually the high point so from there it'll slope to the drain at one end and to, to the near end where we're looking from there's another drain Now that we have all the dirt out and we have the eight inches below top finish, we can add the base in, get it compacted. What we'll do to get this base right on the slope that we want is we'll actually just rod it with a two by four as you would rod, uh, rod off concrete or screed concrete. We're just gonna use that same technique and make this base right on the money two and a quarter inches actually three and a quarter below top of pavers because that'll allow for an inch of sand because we have a valley here and a high high point and a low point on the drains we're just going to run the two i for the long ways right through the valley to screed this off and then we're going to circle rod around the drains so that this base is right where it has to be and then then it's real simple to put the sand in. You can use a three quarter inch PVC and just screed your sand off of that. Just lay your PVC on top of the compact base and then screed off of those three quarter inch PVCs. Now you have, you know, approximately an inch of sand to lay on. But you can do the sand the same way we did the base as well. You can just screed it with a two by four there's the easy access brass caps for um, your sewer clean outs and the reason there's two of them is they're designed in the way the elbow is on it or the sweep is underground one is pointing in one direction and the other one's pointing in the other direction so if someone would have to snake it the snake would go in two different directions depending on which hole you go into Although they do make a sweep that goes both ways, so you could technically get away with just one, you know, one pipe coming up, one riser, but um, for some reason I don't like the two-way sweeps. I love them personally because it's only one riser, but I guess they're not allowed in some areas. Okay, so that 2 by 4 is setting at top of drain and it's setting at the high point and what they're doing now is the rotting tuna the rotting two and a quarter below top all right so that center screed board there is actually top of pavers right on the valley from high point to drain and now what they're trying to do is get three and a quarter below that to allow for the one inch sand all right so the sand has all been graded all of our grade is looking really good all we're going to do now is just make a square right in this corner the reason why we're going to start in this corner is because it's the longest run in two sections all the way down this way and all the way down that way once we have our uh square in this corner um it'll pretty much tell us um what's going to need cuts and all the cuts are pretty much going to be hidden under the house if anything is not square in this backyard because we're gonna make our own square in this corner right here we're gonna to try to avoid cuts if we can 
but this is the idea right now That's of what we're going with. We got our true blue double checking, making sure that that is a nice square line right there, 90 degrees in both ways, going this way and also going that way. This is how the hair and bone pattern is going to look. It's an orcata color, Villa Pavers. That's how we're gonna make it look at the, like pretty much everywhere else once we get all the pieces in place. So, I'm gonna get to it. That downspout for the uh, gutters, you could technically, you could tie that into your drain system if you wanted to, which is kind of a nice, because then you don't have the water running over the surface. And a lot of times they'll just continually drip every morning and you'll start seeing a stain there. But I mean, this is gonna get sealed, so it shouldn't be a problem. So right now on the edges against of the two buildings, the pavers are just ending approximately eight inches in. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna snap a line, a chalk line on them all the way down once it's all set. And then we'll saw cut, we'll wet cut a perfectly straight line that's eight inches wide off of the building to the new pavers that are set. And that'll give you your soldier course running on both sides. This is what we got done so far. Man, the herringbone style is coming up so nice. Wow, look at this, guys. We're just gonna start this next side, do a little bit of screeding. We got our string line set and up. This string line right here is for our square. We wanna make sure we hit every corner paver directly on that string line. This string line is for our grading and screeding so that we can just lay pavers really fast. Pavers all stacked on the side, ready to lay out. It's gonna look good when it's all done. That little two foot wide level there, it's about two inches height, so you just follow that line that gives you just the right amount of space for to get your pavers in so I don't believe that line is actually um, straight with the uh, pattern it looks like it's off on one end I think they're just using that for height more than anything
to lock all this in so these pavers don't start shifting and moving around they'll be bound in between the two buildings once the soldier course goes in and also the uh, polymeric sand that stuff gets hard as you spread it out spread it around sweep it into all the joints and then soak it in between the bricks it actually hardens up in there and then uh, locks everything in place so I guess some advantages to laying some pavers in an area like this would be uh, if you wanted to so if you notice there's that little bib hanging from the the hose bib there's that down you know for future water for maybe hooking up a drip system or something there may even be a gas line or an electrical back here if you wanted to put a barbecue in or some kind of lighting anything like that you could always pull a few pavers up drop everything underground and then put your pavers back in and no one would ever know you did it because you're using the same material you took out to fill back in that trench as if you if this was concrete, you'd have to saw cut it out put the concrete back in and they never and you always have that joint that you'll see and it never dries the same color because of the aging process the different sands and gravels all affects the color little excess sand there put it in a trash bag save it for later because the beauty of having it in a trash bag once you go around the perimeter to set that final soldier course around the edges you may need a little sand um, to get the, the right height we just snapped out our chalk lines for our borders so we can make all the cuts got this side snapped out as well we're gonna be doing some nice fancy cuts for these corner pieces that's kind of what we want them to look like the board is completely marked out. All we did was measure uh, our pavers, which are roughly about eight inches, and we went about eight and a half, just to leave some wiggle room. Because the stucco against the house, especially on this on the slump stone side or split face, uh, we went nine inches on this side. Check it out, guys. What Sam's using right now is a special type of spray that makes it so that your chalk will not disappear when water hits it. What's it called? Clear marking coat, there it is. Super helpful for this type of stuff. Here's the chalk line where it will be getting saw cut. So in order to cut pavers because they're just setting on loose sand, the pavers are gonna probably wanna move around a little bit on you when you're trying to cut them so you gotta almost stand on them a little bit to keep them in position while you're cutting through all the slurry that the saw is generating when you're cutting wet like this you gotta rinse it right away because once it dries it's gonna get it's gonna be hard to get it off another option is you get you can dry vac it use a dry cut with a vacuum attachment So the border is cut out. All we gotta do is 
lay the paper borders in now. And they're fitting pretty nicely, it looks like. We just gotta go all the way down, lay it all out. Got Omar on the sewer cap drain cut still. Oh, oh, we're having some problems? Nah. Easy peasy. He's handling all these uh, small, annoying cuts. You got most of the drink cuts in. Actually, all of them, I think, huh? All the drink cuts are good, huh, Omar? Yeah, well, that one I just have to uh, cut where that drain is so I can uh, lower it. Yeah, that's oh, okay. Getting it down, you know? So, yeah, most of the drains are pretty set in place. This drain's done over here. We got all the papers ready for the outer border areas. Now that everything's set, pressure wash everything, get the area cleaned up, then it's almost ready for some polymeric sand to lock it all in. All right, we have all of the pavers in, the border, the cuts, put some fancy little corner cuts in. Here's how it's looking. The only thing that we haven't done so far is just sand everything. Oh man, these cuts take a while to get right. Get two of them. Radius cuts are always hard. Square cuts are much easier. Putting uh, some tape right now on the drains so that when we start to lay our sure link uh, sand over here, we don't get no sand down the drains. That'd be terrible because the sand has a hardener chemical inside of it. So once you wet it, it gets hard and locks everything in place and we definitely don't want that down the drain. Got a couple brooms out here help push it around. This is what's gonna really seal the deal for these pavers, keep everything in place and where we want it. All right, he's got all the drains taped up. Let's start dumping it. So you sweep this quite a bit in all different directions and you just keep adding more sand until um, it stops falling down between the cracks. Kind of the, um, it's the same situation you'd see with an hourglass. The sand just keeps falling to the bottom until it tops out. I believe there may be a um, drain in that uh, air conditioning area because the air conditioner is kind of recessed now. So it'd be a good idea to have a drain in that area. Now, if it was high, it wouldn't really matter, but if it's low, you're going to want an area drain. Now, with the water, what happens with that sand, once it dries out, is it gets hard like concrete or, or mortar. That's a split face block wall, very irregular. There's not a whole lot you can do about that. 
unless you pour like maybe a concrete mo strip that first off of that and then work from there so that's pretty much how it's going to look when the sealer hits it it's going to give it that nice wet look and that sealer will prevent it from staining in the future and it'll hold the color preserve the color for a longer period of time anyway thank you for watching my video have a good day make sure you like share and subscribe and hit the notification so you'll get notified as soon as we upload the next video have a good one bye <laughs>